Thank you, John, and thank you, everybody, coming to listening to my presentation. Uh, I'm very humbled to have been asked uh, or invited by John Bryan to talk about OSGO. It's, it's for the first time in my life I have a presentation dedicated to OSGO. I always have OSGO mentioned in all of my slides, but never really talked about the foundation, so I hope to do justice to their wonderful work. So let me start with what's OSGO all about. Well, it's simple, and that's in the orange. The aim is to empower everyone with open source geospatial, and that involves software, tools, data, standards, all sorts of things, as we will see. OSGO is a member-driven, not-for-profit uh, organization or foundation, which has few tasks. First of all, to organize people activities, uh, then uh, offer a platform for public technology commons, so tools, data, educational products. Then uh, they act as developer manager, so they curate and incubate projects uh, and help developers to do it in a systematic and reliable way. And they are also very often an event sponsor, so most of GEO activities you will see the logo of OSGEO. Now this foundation is built on two main concepts and these two are the open source, which are the 10 rules coming from DBN software development on how to provide an open source software. So it's not only about the free distribution and the source code, but mostly about using appropriate li license uh, to allow users to actually access it uh, in a proper way but at the same time acknowledge the authors of the software in a proper way. Open Geospatial is all about Open Geospatial data, uh, Open Geo education, Open Geo science and Open Geo standards. So everything that's specific to the Geo domain. There are three main areas of actuation, so three goals of OSGO and that is to provide help with development, uh, help to build strong OSGO community and help to ensure that these OSGO tools actually use open standards or allow users to interact through open standard interfaces using data standardized based on open standard encodings and so forth. Now, the development within OSGO is driven and curated and organized and helped by so-called incubation community within OSGO Foundation. And they have the role in assuring that developers develop their codes in line with the principles and the charter of OSGO, in other terms, as, as open source, working with open geodata, uh, allowing open science, uh, allowing everything that they stand for. There are several benefits of joining this way of developing your tools uh, if you plan it to open it for the public and that is, well, most of all, uh, it's to ensure the development is topical, it stays within the lines, it's managed, it's systematic and it's repeatable, reusable. But also you expose your efforts to a huge community nowadays uh, of OSGO supporters so you have get instant feedback and just push forward to make things better than you might have planned originally. There are also, of course, all sorts of source code checks and code developer associated activities that are helped with by the OSGO. There are two main kinds of projects, and most of you will know who visit the OSGO website. These are community projects and OSGO projects. And the difference is that the community projects are developed outside of that uh, incubation program of OSGO, but yet are exposed to the OSGO community for feedback, for use. Sometimes it's just to actually show that we are behind OSGO principles, but we are doing our own thing anyway. Whereas OSGO projects actually get the full support. Now, this is more to bring in some color. I'm not going to talk about these tools, and many of these tools are known to you. Most of us are avid users of these. So these are just examples. Uh, the list is much longer, and I encourage you to uh, search through it and find a tool that you might actually find useful. There are several initiatives uh, within OSGO and they, they are perhaps uh, worth mentioning in addition to, uh, to what has been already said. These are the initiatives that help to actually do much more than just software development, curation and incubation. And uh, first of all, FOSFOG and FOSFOG travel grants. So these are uh, managed and organized by the OSGO Foundation 
and they ensured Phosphogeo community means uh, annually, uh, internationally, and uh, also supports uh, regional chapters such as the one we are right now in participating. Another uh, interesting initiative and very important because uh, we tend to think OSG is all about software, but it's not because it's much more necessary to actually ensure the software is used properly, software is available uh, and it's attributed to the authors and that users actually know how to use the software and this initiative is geo for all and that's a, a group of uh, enthusiastic educators with OSGO tools who uh, decided to join into a group ensuring there are uh, tools available for classroom, for teachers, for researchers. There are educational materials that can be shared available. Uh, then uh, there are uh, some support for educational activities. Now, geo for all uh, operates the network of so-called OSGO labs and these are the labs you see the distribution on the map. Uh, it's not uh, a super impressive number, but there are a lot of them. And the idea is to actually set up a lab where purely OSGO tools are used in developing projects. And uh, when the, that lab exists, can register themselves to the map. Resources, one of the pages nowadays curated by the OSGO, not within the geo for all website it is, uh, is contains all sorts of dedicated materials, teaching materials for other teachers to use and those that actually are with and on Open Geospatial Tools. So we as educators actually, we don't teach tools, we use tools to actually practice the, the principles we teach with. Uh, sometimes these are OSGO and thereby uh, possible to share for others many local chapters here and we have he heard the one that applies to us so uh, currently it's OSGO Oceania but you can see from this list that uh, actually chapters can group on whatever principle they just need to actually demonstrate they promote OSGO uh, within their activities. We were just talking before uh, earlier with John Looking at the huge amount of interested people, maybe it's time to set up an OSGOWA chapter. What do you think? Yeah. Another one, uh, quite interesting and important nowadays, initiative uh, of helping UN actually transition from being locked in black boxes and proprietary softwares towards using the OSGO products. That's uh, actually a combination of uh, UN running out of money for expenses with licenses and having OSGO alternatives to the very things they actually use and for what they use. We had last year a uh, presentation uh, on uh, the actual uh, example how, how UN uses this, so slides are available still online if you are interested. There are more initiatives. And two examples, Google Summer of Code, that's dedicated to students, so OSGO mentors, uh, students who are really keen to actually utilize this uh, session to, to improve OSGO tools. So usually ideas for these projects come from the wish list of these tools and OSGO mentors actually step in to help students to complete in time. And another initiative many of you will know is the OSGO Live to ensure that there is a distributable set of OSGO tools that you can just run by sticking a USB to your computer. And two more which are less visible than the others. Uh, one is dealing with Open Geoscience and that was the initiative very enthusiastically set out in 2015 but without any visible activity within OSGO, but there is visible activity by OSGO members all the time. Uh, so there's always somebody actually publishes something on OSGO tools, open data, and so all the concepts OSGO curates. And uh, I apologize for the shameless plug, but that's one of the uh, good overviews of what existed in 2020. And the last initiative is to ensure that libraries, OSGO curated libraries, do talk to each other so that they use open interfaces, open data and so forth. Now let's talk about membership. So this is the members driven organization. So what type of memberships are there? 
participants and you are all now participants as so members of OSGO. Then there are members, so those that actually registered to OSGO uh, website and OSGO foundation and put up their hands to help out running the organization in one of, the, one of their four activities, organizing, curating or uh, helping with events. And there are charter members, so charter members are those that are actually selected from everybody else who is enthusiastic in OSGO to ensure that there is democracy, so that OSGO members just don't run wild, but they are actually policed by community. A few examples. Well, you are participants. Here is the current board of directors, so examples of members. Well, same old, same old, or so same well-known names uh, in the OSGO community. And, well, a few, three examples of charter members. Yes, number 161, number 409, and number 447. OSGO is a not-for-profit organization, so for running their activities, they are dependent on sponsors. And of course, we have various levels, and these might be temporary, so it's a lot of previous sponsors, so they were affluent at, at some time and wanted to donate, but then they ran out of money, so they had to step out and given opportunity to others. Now, don't get me wrong, so, so these sponsors do not sponsor development of the tools. So those open OSGO tools, software packages have their own sponsors, oftentimes the same company. But these sponsor, the sponsorship given through these sponsors is to run the organization, to have money for events and uh, all sorts of other things. Now, I was thinking uh, how to actually conclude this. Uh, this chat, well, chat talk presentation, sorry, so I decided instead of telling you how to actually join to provide an example how I ended up with OSGO. I'm not a developer, yes, as I said, many people think OSGO is all about coding and uh, creating these super perfect tools and submitting it to give it to the community. No, I am not a developer, uh, although that's what you see there, the television with this funky keyboard and the cassette where the program came on is my computer station at the age of primary school. But the, all I did was I actually programmed the, this little, on the black picture, uh, it was called Karel the Robot, who is a, an ancestor of Guido van Robot, which you might know from the Python language. But these are deep 80s and all it knew is to actually program a recursion, you know, turn three times to the right to be turned to the left. My programming uh, culminated when I actually made him just kick the wall and was laughing that he looks like he's just cleaning his foot, but he didn't know to do anything. But actually, uh, I had a basics of programming and starting with the basic, the language, programming language, and went through all sorts of weird languages like C, and uh, well, ended up with a bit of a Python. So, but I'm still, I still didn't develop into a coder or programmer. But I can read code. I can select the code fit for my purpose, and uh, to uh, I can uh, extend it with whatever I need in addition and implement a tool. Yes. Next characteristic, I always was short of whatever currency. Yes, I come from not an affluent background and also not from an affluent country, from Slovakia. That was mid-90s, but uh, we were officially after transition from the communist system, but these are, this is deeply rooted and, you know, make a society appreciate funding whatever related to education or science just takes time. A lot of time, uh, more than a lot of time. So, I also didn't have a stomach to beg for licenses and I gave up in first or few resistance, uh, well, encountering first, first few times a resistance with stupid arguments. So I said, okay, let's look for some other options. So we had the internet, it was still spelled with a capital I, so mid-90s, I tell you. Uh, and we had access to uni computers. I haven't had mine, uh, but I could actually 
access what was available for me and most of them were encrypted with password 123 in mid 90s so it was very easy to actually uh, try to see if there is something else on BitTorrent than just Rambo movies yes and we found stuff that was the open source tools so what happened yes I actually turned into a pioneer OSGO super user in mid 90s out of necessity without even well OSGO didn't exist then so without even knowing what I'm what am I doing so I had I was using the baby versions of all these softwares and this trio is my gold combination I always found some student to actually extend it because you know I had an idea planted a bug to them to those that were curious enough to actually help making them this work now after being elected as a charter member so what what possibly can I actually give back to this community my mom told me that whatever I actually get for free I should try to find a way to give back so everything I learned about OSGO tools and working with OSGO tools was given to me for free as part of these OSGO tools in user manuals, in discussion forums. So I thought, how am I? I'm not a developer. How am I going to contribute? So because I teach on OSGO, I decided, well, that's the way. Yes, helping in all educational activities. Uh, acting in academic tracks as a reviewer, accepting, always accepting a paper to review when it discusses OSGO tools, because that's the way to improve those as well. I mentor the educational challenges, helping UN open GIS initiative, and show, always show people who get stuck in proprietary software the equivalent of OSGO, because nowadays it's possible. Yes, it's a uh, more than 30 years of development and there is always an equivalent for whatever you do in uh, this other software. So how will you contribute is my question here. Thank you. <laughs>